2 Peter chapter 3. Starting at the first verse, we're going to be reading, and I was preaching on the keys to prosperity. I have not forgotten about that, and I'm going to pick that back up at some point. But I was given a message this week that's convenient for all of us. Amen? Somebody say amen. Amen. First, what did I say? Second Peter? Second Peter. Chapter 3. And this message of salvation is for all of us. But if I were to put a title on today's message, I would say, Divine Moments Are Based on Divine Promises. Divine moments are based, are defined on divine promises. Amen, amen. Many of you might not understand this, but uh, many times when God opened the doors for us, we are to seize the moment. Amen. Because that moment that you're living in right now is a divine moment. Amen. It's a moment in which God himself has prescribed uh, long before you came through your mother's womb. It was an appointed time for you to be here today other than being anywhere else. Many of us supposed to be uh, uh, by right there and go. But God sought to make death behave. Amen. Therefore, rebuking death, making this moment a divine moment for you. Divine moments are based on divine promises. Amen. God, above all things, will not renege or will not back off the promises that he made to his people. Amen. Well, come on, somebody. Amen. You and I have a covenant with the Father. Amen. Oh, somebody ought to say amen this morning. Amen. Uh, you've been bought with a price. The day that God saved you was a divine moment. Amen. Oh, my Lord. Amen. You couldn't get away from what God has in store for you and me. Amen. And you ought to raise up your hand this morning and thank God for the victory. Thank God for your life. Thank God for the joy that you have in your situation. Even if you're going through right now, you ought to give God the praise. It's a divine moment, and Peter found out what that really meant. Something to divine. I know that some women look at some men, and some men look at some women and say, he's so divine. She, she's so divine. Yeah. Come on, somebody. But when God says you're divine, Hallelujah. come on, somebody. Hallelujah. When God put his anointing on your life, God put his power in your life. It's to help you to overcome anything that you're going through by faith. Amen. Peter first deals with the problems in the first book of Peter. He deals with the problem of the problems of the outside. But what we're getting ready to deal with is the problems on the inside. Amen. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. Uh, Peter oftentimes wrote to warn the believers about the false teachings who were peddling damaging doctrine. He began by urging us to keep close on our personal watch and our personal lives. As a Christian, we are demand, we are demand diligence in pursuing moral excellence, in pursuing knowledge, in pursuing self-control, and above all, persevering. Amen. Having godliness and brotherly kindness and selfless love. Versus contrast to what the world is doing, they're creating problems for the church. Look around you today and you see all kind of issues that are happening. But I'm here to tell you this morning, look to somebody and say, we got to stand steadfast. Steadfast and unmovable. Amen? Because you see, in this coming year is going to be a, a prosperous year. Not only for this ministry, but for each and every one of you as individuals. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You might not see it right now, but when it happened, amen. you can't say you never heard it before. Amen. 
Oh, come on, somebody. Many times we're caught up in the moment and forget that God that we serve is a sovereign God. Amen. And all power and dominion belong to him. Amen. I've learned that though God owned the cattle on a thousand hills, he also owned those potatoes that are under the hill. Amen. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. So everything that the world is trying to claim as their own, God owned it long before they came along. Here in chapter 3, verses 1, the second epistle, beloved now write unto thee, in both which I stir up your pure conscience. Stir up in your pure mind by the way of bringing back to remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, they're going to come scufflers. They're going to scuff at everything you stand for. They're going to mark the very words that you proclaim. Walking after their own lusts. Saying, where is the promises? Oh, my God. You see, they're already cursing you. Asking you, where is the promises of God? And you got to continue to tell them, I'm standing on the promises. They may look at your feet and you can tell the devil that's where he's going to be. He says here, and the coming, for since the father fell asleep, since the men and women and all, I've been hearing that for a long time. And all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. But people are asking, where is the promise at? For this thy willing uh, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and of the earth standing out of the waters and in the waters. Pay attention to this here. Wherefore the world that then was being overflowed with water perish, but the heavens in and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto unto fire. Y'all listen to this? Amen. Unto fire against what? Against the day of judgment. Amen. And the prediction, perdition of the ungodly. Verse 8 he says, but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing. Are y'all ready for this? Amen. Don't be ignorant of this one thing that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Amen. And a thousand years is as one day. Yeah. Don't you realize there's 86,400 seconds in one day? Yeah. And being with God a thousand years, you multiply that by a thousand? <laughs> and now you begin to talk about eternity. And then in verse 9 he says, the Lord is not slack. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is not slack. Is not slack. You got to believe it like you mean it. Amen. God is not slack, is not slack. Concerning, his concerning his promises. And some men count slackness, but the God we serve is long suffering. To us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. My, my, my. In the which the heavens, pay attention here, it's going to happen so fast that the heavens is going to melt away. Are y'all looking at this? When Jesus appeared, the heavens that we know as of right now will melt away. You think, man, come on, somebody, got a problem with the space station now. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. Houston, we have a problem. Are y'all with me on this? Uh, I think everybody on earth, I think the Bible says if you got trouble, you ought to call on the Lord. Amen. You ought to be able to say, heaven, earth got problems. You ought to be able to cry out to God because the day that Jesus shall appear, all the heavens will melt away 
at his appearance. Man will have a place to stand and will have a place to be able to contend with God. It will happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The fire will be caught up. Fire like man has never ever seen in his entire existence. Ain't that what he said? He's not slack concerning for, but in that day he will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You see it here? The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Man ain't going to have no PlayStation or no space station to play with. Are y'all with me on this? You know, he might be out in space playing with his PlayStation on the space station. But God is serious about what he's going to do. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all manner, all holy conversation? In other words, holy conduct and godliness. What are you going to be looking for? Looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens, being on fire, being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements, he said a second time, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Sound like there's going to be a heaven cookout. Come on, somebody. And souls that are not with Christ are going to be on the burner. Nevertheless, we according to this promise, according to his promise, look for the new heaven. Everybody say a new heaven and a new earth. Wherein dwell righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spots and without blame. And accounts that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also concerning to the wisdom given unto him have written unto you. Also, as also in all the epistles speaking of them, of these things in which are now are some things hard to be understood. Which they that are unlearned and unstable still wrestle with to this day. As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. And verse 17 and 18 says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, he says, Beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. Everybody said, But grow, but grow in grace. In grace. And in the knowledge, in the knowledge of, the Lord, of the Lord, of our Lord, our Lord. and our Savior, our Savior Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ, to him be glory, him be glory. Both, now both now and forever. And, forever. and everybody say amen. amen. By the grace of God, you are here. Amen. By his divine promise. You are here. Yes, By his divine moment, God has sanctioned this day so you will be alive. Amen. Why? Because we're living in perilous times. Amen. We're living in difficult times. Amen. But the God we serve is a powerful God. Yes, He's a mighty God. Amen. He's an everlasting God. Amen. He's a God that will move mountains if you got a mountain in your way. Amen. He's a God that will help you overcome any circumstances that will try to crop up in your life. And he's a God that shows for mercy. He's a forgiving God. And he's also an everlasting God. Are y'all with me on this? It's important that you understand that uh, over in the scripture that talks about a man that had an infirmity for 38 years. 38 years long after Jesus was born. The Bible said that Jesus knew of this man. And there was a feast in Jerusalem, and Jesus was in the, uh, went up to uh, Jerusalem for this feast. 
And while he was there, he noticed that there was a porch. And at this gate where this porch was, they call it Solomon's porch, there were five porches. And there along the porch, there was there what they call the pool of Siloam. A uh, pool of peace, if you please. And once a year, for some unexplained reason, the angels will go down into the water and trouble the water. Yeah. Are y'all with me on this? But this man who had been on this porch for at least 38 years of his life, he wanted to go down and, and get in the water because everybody that was in this household and on these porches were afflicted all their lives. And they had one shot of getting healed of all their diseases, and that's when the angel came down once a year to trouble the waters. And Jesus saw this man and looked over him, and he didn't know who Jesus was. And Jesus asked him, will thou be made whole? I don't think y'all understand here. At this very moment that Jesus asked in this man, do we want to be made whole? That came about what they call a divine moment. You got divine moments in your life that you need to reconcile a divine moment that you can reflect on to see what God brought you through. Oh, somebody had to say amen. amen. This man was on the porch, afflicted in his body, and he would try to crawl down to the, to the pool to just get in the water when the angels stirred the water. And Jesus said, "Can you? would you like to be made whole? He said, I would like to be made whole, but every time I get down to the water, another man step in the water for me. Oh, my God. You don't quite understand. This man didn't realize he was talking to the great physician. He was talking to the great healer. He was talking to the great deliverer. He was talking to one that had power that was able to stir the water even on dry land. He wanted to get the water. He said, every time I try to test the water, somebody beat me to it. You ever notice that when you're trying to pray the Lord, somehow it seems like heaven seems to be all blocked up, but you got to keep pressing your way. Amen. Sometimes it looks like the heaven turned into brass, and, and your prayer seems to bounce back, but you got to press your way. Amen. Huh. Amen. You can't give up. you got to be steadfast. Amen. Year after year, this man tried to get to the water. How many of you are trying to get to the Lord now? Amen. How many of you are trying to stay with the Lord now? Amen. How many are trying to stay steadfast now? Oh, you came here after two weeks now. Come on, somebody. You should have some praise built up in you. You should have some worship built up in you. I'm here to tell you, God can shut down the church every Sunday if he wanted to. Oh, y'all don't want to hear what I got to say this morning. Huh. This man said, I want to get here, but the angel stirred him up, and Jesus wanted him to know, pick up a rise. Rise up and take up thy bed. And I want you to understand something. This was on the Sabbath day. Amen. When Jesus told his man to rise up. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that inside of you, you got to rise up. Amen. And claim your divine moment. Amen. Claim your divine promise. Amen. Claim that which God has given you. Amen. Look at somebody say, look at somebody and say, you're living a divine moment. Some of y'all hear them in the dying moment. What that mean? I don't know what that mean. Anything that has to come from God that has God's blessing on it, has God's anointing on it, has God's power on it, that can change your life. When God saved you, it was a divine moment. When God sanctified you, it was a divine moment. When God put the Holy Ghost in your life, it was a divine moment. When God told you, go ahead on now, that's my child, it was a divine moment. Oh, I can feel somebody need a breakthrough this morning. Somebody been holding out on the praise. Come on, somebody. This man wanted to get in the water, but inside of you, you got to rise up above your circumstances. Rise up above your situation. Rise up above the issue that crop up in your life. And realize you're living a divine moment. For well, one day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Amen. 
I tell you, I got excited when you might not be excited, but I got excited when he showed me this. You mean to tell me moment by moment I'm living a divine life? Come on, somebody. Moment by moment you breathe in and breathe out. There's a divine purpose. There's a divine reason why you do what you do. And that comes from the Lord of hosts. His man couldn't get in the water because somebody always beating him. Isn't it always interesting somebody always beat you to the law at first? Amen. Come on, somebody. But I'm here to tell you, you might not be able to beat somebody to the water, but you can beat yourself to the Lord. Amen. You can be about your father's business. Amen. You can be in a divine presence of the Lord and ask for divine promises based on his holiness and his righteousness. Amen. Amen. This man got picked up his bed and walking all those people walking. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been knowing him 38 years. I ain't never known him to walk. He been on that porch all his life. Sometimes folks been in that place, the same spot all the time. Well, I don't hear that, huh? Amen. Why he ain't moving? Why he ain't changing? God has a divine reason for everything. Amen. Sometimes people get out of the will of God because they think what they think and what they do is based on what God said and God will move you based on divine providence. Amen. There's a reason for everything, and some folk, if they don't follow God, they get out of the will of God. Amen. It's so easy to do, you know. Amen. This man found himself picking up his bed and walking, and when those men that were around said, wait a minute, we've been knowing you for a long time. How did you get here? You didn't get in the water. You know, folks are looking at you today and wonder how you got saved. You better be careful who God might save, you know. Amen. Some of them that you call no good and up to no good, and ain't going to be no good, and ain't going to add up to nothing, guess what? They may beat you into heaven. Amen. Somebody said, no, they ain't. <laughs> they ain't going to be men to heaven because every man got to go for himself. Amen. What are you saying? I'm trying to bring you to a divine moment of understanding God's plan of salvation for you and I. Why is this so important? Because when this man rised up, picked up his bed and walked, those who recognized him began to question him, who healed you? And the man could not identify who Jesus was. He said, all I know, some man, the Bible said because Jesus blended into the crowd and he left. And this man was standing there with a healed blanket in his hand. Come on, somebody. Walking around, no longer wearing clothes or beggarly garment, no more, no more wearing their own nature, but he lived in the presence of God. And he lived in a divine moment. And when they questioned him, it was on the Sabbath day, and they felt that Jesus had broke the law. But then they didn't like this healing on the Sabbath day. He said, I don't know who he was. All I know, he told me to pick up my bed and rise. Look at somebody and say, you out to rise and walk. Yeah. What are you saying? Rise, whatever situation you're in, you out to rise above it. Whatever the things you're going through, you out to rise above it. Whatever issues you're dealing with, once again, rise above it. And tell the devil he's a liar. He can't have my son. He can't have my daughter. He can't have my brother. He can't have my sister. If you don't speak it, When you speak it is a divine moment. Speak it into the atmosphere so the angels can hear. So that the ears of God will be pert to the truth. We see here that, that this man didn't quite know who Jesus was, but later on after they questioned this man, how did he come to be healed? He couldn't explain. He just knew that the man uh, told him to take up his bed and walk. And the Bible said later on when the man was walking, Jesus wasn't looking for the man. I'm here to tell you, when you get saved, God's going to come looking for you. He's going to come searching you out. He knows who you are, and he knows where you live, and he's going to search you out. He found the man, and he says, you wanted to be made whole. He wanted to know who was Jesus. Jesus explained to him, number one, who you got healed by. It was a divine moment for the man. When you recognize that you didn't get saved on your own. You didn't have power to get saved on your own. You didn't have power to be delivered on your own. You didn't 
have power to overcome everything in your life. It took a divine moment. Right here, right now, while you're sitting here, God has a dying, a divine moment so you can feel the power. You can sit up there a little cute week after week, but you got to do something with this divineness. Come on, somebody. It's better to put on divine than to put on the world's rags. Come on, somebody. And the world's riches. Come on, somebody. And don't have no place to go. This man, when he heard that Jesus, come on, somebody, healed his body. When he heard that Jesus healed his mind. When he heard that Jesus delivered his soul. He was ready to go back and tell those men. It was Jesus that delivered me. I couldn't get to the water, but the water got to me. Oh, come on, somebody. I couldn't get to the bread, but the bread got to me. I couldn't get to the light, but the light got to me. Don't you understand? If you can't get there, Jesus will meet you halfway. Because this is a divine promise. You're living in a divine moment. And God will meet you more than halfway. Look at somebody and grab them by the hand. Grab them by the hand and say, I command a divine blessing in the name of Jesus. Right now, in every area of your life, in Jesus' name. Some of y'all have to give God the praise. Some of y'all have to give God the praise. You can be like this man. The man with an infirmity. He couldn't get to the water. But the water walked up on God's hand. The water came up to him. The water touched him. The water told him to rise up. Jesus said, I'm the living water. And out of your bed, so come rivers of living waters. You've got to let Jesus rise. Some of y'all sitting there like you ain't never felt the Holy Ghost. Some of you looking like you ain't never understood the power of God's divine plan. To me, it's a divine moment. And when I feel God's power, it's a divine moment. Oh, I don't think y'all understand. I can't live but one moment at a time. But I want to live in the divine moment. Come on, somebody. I live enough in the world's moment. Oh, come on, somebody. The world trying to give you Facebook and YouTube 15 seconds of fame. But God want to give you eternal life. Oh, come on, somebody. And it's a divine providence. Rise up and take up your bed and walk. Amen. Look at somebody say, I'm going to get a new walk. Oh, oh, come on, somebody. Say it out loud like you mean it. I'm going to get a new walk. Oh, back. back in the 60s and 70s, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Am I talking right? Well, if you say it, you have to say it loud. Thank you, Lord. I'm saved. Don't be getting mad at me now. I ain't had nothing to do with the snow. In fact, when y'all was at home, I came over here and prayed anyhow. 
Oh, come on, somebody. I got to have some kind of a time with the Lord. And I'm going to bless this place because it's a divine purpose to everything that God does. How do I know it's divine? Because when them 70 went out and came back, Jesus! Jesus! All kind of spirits and demons are subject to us in your name. We lay hands on the sick. They jumped up. We put our eyes on the blind. They opened their eyes. We put hands on those who couldn't hear. And they was able to hear. We spoke to the lame, and the lame got up. We come back with a praise report. They came back happy. They came back rejoicing. They appreciated the divine moment. But Jesus didn't want to hurt their feeling. So he said, I know you're happy. Because all spirits and all things are, are subject to my name. Come on, somebody. Ain't many can use that name and, and say bad things. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. He says, but I know you came back. He said, but marvel not. Amen. Be not amazed that all these spirits were subject to you. Amen. He said, but if you're going to be happy, Amen. if you're going to rejoice, Amen. if you're going to have a divine moment, Amen. oh, come on, somebody. Y'all yeah. ain't with me this morning. Get back on track. Get back on line. Rejoice because the spirits are subject. Rejoice because. Rejoice because. God pulled out his holy pen. God pulled out a holy scroll. God took the time and he wrote your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You ought to rejoice. not understand why things are happening the way they do. But God is always working on your behalf. God is always doing things on your behalf. Whether you like it or not, he's still working on it. Come on, somebody. When you learn to grow in grace, you got to sow seeds in the grace. When you learn to grow in grace, you got to sow seeds in the grace. And I know when some of y'all are growing in grace, because every now and then, every now and then, Junior, I, every now and then, are y'all with me? Yes, yes. Somebody say, every now, every now and then. You hear people use God's middle name. <laughs> y'all didn't know God had a middle name? <laughs> Look at somebody and say, you didn't know God had a middle name? I can tell you his middle name was Lord have mercy. <laughs> when things don't go right, Lord have mercy. I always can I have, may I have, Lord have mercy, have mercy, mercy, have. Maybe y'all understand when you say Lord have mercy. Amen. You get a good plate of food and it's good right down to the rib cage. You say, Lord, have mercy. Don't act like y'all don't have no Thanksgiving dinner. Come on, somebody. Now you're getting ready to go into the Christmas dinner right now. Come on, somebody. When them 70 return rejoicing happy, you have to understand for them that receive the power of God in their life, it was a divine moment. You have divine moments all the time, but you might not recognize them. God want me to tell you what he gave to me. Come on, somebody. Recognize them. When, oh, you know, this week, come on, somebody. I try to spend my money. People told me my money won't no good. Are y'all with me this week? I went to go buy something. They said, don't you worry about it. I put my money back in my pocket. Come on, somebody. You can have a divine moment. You don't know how God going to bless you. You don't know how God going to open up. You don't know how God's going to do things for you. You might not understand that now, but sooner or later it's going to dawn on you. 
Sometimes you got to savor the moment. I'm going to have to talk to y'all because they ain't paying no attention to me. You ever been on the job and you're working with people and they have what they call a meltdown? Well, they're having a war meltdown. But when you're in the body of Christ, you have a divine moment. You say, excuse me for a minute. Sometimes you got to go in the bathroom and slam the door. Come on, somebody. When you learn to give God the praise, give God the glory, you'll come back with a praise report. You'll come back with a good report. It'll be a report based on faith that you moved out by faith. Amen. Now, that the Spirit got you where he wants you. Come on, somebody. I went looking back on this woman that was caught in the act of adultery. She was laying up. Come on, somebody. Described in the Pharisee, the religious folks, them sanctified folks. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. They didn't caught this woman, and according to the law of Moses, she was supposed to be stoned to death. Now, if you go and cross-examine that scripture, you're going to find out a lot of information there. Amen. There ain't no information missing, Amen. but it's information that if you ain't paying attention, you'll overlook it. Amen. Oh, Lord, Pastor, don't. You, you know, Lord, forgive me, Pastor, because I had no business laying up with that man last night. <laughs> Pastor, you can pray for me. No, you need to go for the Lord for yourself. <laughs> this sounds like a personal thing now. Come on, somebody. Amen. This Amen. That, it was amazing that the Bible said they, these scribes and Pharisees, caught this woman in the very act. Yeah. Yeah. They brought the woman, but where was the man? Yeah. And if the woman, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Yeah. It takes two to. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And don't tell me y'all look at me like y'all don't know how to tangle now. I know where I'm going with this, but I want you to understand something. It's deeper than just this man and this woman. But they were going to stone this woman. And they brought this woman and they put her in the midst. And all them folks that were standing around with these big old rocks in their hand. And they were ready to stone her. And they said, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery, and according to the law of Moses, we supposed to stone her. What do you say ye? <laughs> and this is the part that's going to get to all of y'all. The Bible said that Jesus stooped down, started writing on the ground, and they repeated again, we caught her in adultery, but what say ye? And the Bible said that Jesus stood up and said, he that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. Amen. Now, you need to understand something that was happening between the time they was condemning him and the time he was writing. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. When he stooped back down and started writing, <laughs> in the spirit realm, it's always been a curiosity of what he was writing. So some of those that was getting ready to stone him walked over and saw, are you the man? Are you a liar? Are you a thief? Come on, somebody. Are you a cutthroat? He was just a liar. He didn't have to say it. They ran it for themselves. And the Bible said one by one. Their own conscience convicted them. Amen. I don't think y'all are ready for that kind of teaching. In other words, Jesus said, are you that man that was with that woman? Did you lie today? Did you steal today? Are you a scuffler? Are you a false accuser? Did you disobey your mother and your father? Well, he was just writing up something. And when he stood up again, he said, he that without sin, the man who caught her, uh -huh. 
<laughs> you ain't gonna look at me like that. I know what I'm talking about. How did a man catch her but didn't get condemned? But on the on the end part, he got condemned because his own conscience condemned him. And, he, and the first man that the man that catch her was the man according to the law was supposed to throw the first stone. How many stones you been throwing lately? Look at somebody and say, I hope you ain't throwing no stones. Because some of y'all got some big old stones in your hand. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all got so many stones in your hand, you got gold stones. You got kidney stones. Come on, somebody. When you didn't hard your heart and hard your mind against your brother, against your sister. They don't want to hear that kind of preaching, you know what I mean? See, I learned if you're gonna if you're gonna be a bully, come on somebody, Amen. and you're gonna fight a bully, you you might get whooped. I, I, I learned from the experience. Come on somebody, the devil is a bully. I'm trying to get with the word. Stick with me, come on somebody, and I'll bring it clear to your mind. When the devil try to treat you like he bullying you, he might try to whoop you, but you gotta get a lick in there. And when you get a lick in there, he gonna leave you alone. You might not know where I'm going, but the spirit know how. Because when I'm preaching the gospel, I try to live in a divine moment. If you can't receive it in a moment, then you're in trouble. Sometimes the devil stir all kind of stuff up. He is without sin. Jesus stood up, looked around on the crowd, won't nobody stand in there with that woman. And all them rocks. You can tell when God has saved you, cause all your friends leave you. All your buddies leave you. All them homosexual friends leave you. All them no good rascals leave you. You ain't giving nothing away no more, cause God has saved you. When God saved you, and you're saved and you're single, you don't have no business having sex no more. Now I know some of y'all sitting up here and, and, and you think you're in a courtroom. Objection! We ain't in no courtroom. We in God's living room. And it ain't no objection in here. It's all perfection. It's all about the gospel being preached and proclaimed in these low and evil days. Oh, you want to have some divine moment when folks will test your living walk. Look to somebody and say, there ain't no objection to what God is doing. My, my, my. Somebody look at somebody and say, Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Have is God's middle name. Because y'all done used it so much. Come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy. Come on, somebody. Don't y'all look at me. I see some of these men for, see these old big booty women. Lord, have mercy. You women see these bow legged men walk out, say, Lord, have mercy. He's fine to the nine. All right. Just cut it out. Stay in the divine moment. Stay in control of your life. Stay in control of your nature. Be self-controlled. Be disciplined. You can, you can learn a lot from the Philistines. I know a couple of Philistines on TV. One of them name is, her name is Beyonce. She said, she said, if you love it, put a ring on it. How do I know she's a Philistine? Because she's uncircumcised. 
See, y'all are missing the whole point. You're missing the whole boat. When God saved you, you're going to say gospel music. You're going to pray gospel way. You're going to dance gospel music. You're going to shout gospel music. You're going to be pure gospel. You're not going to say some Christmas song. Everybody's saying Christmas song because it's Christmas jing jing. I hear the world saying Santa Claus is coming to town. You change some of the words in Santa, it means Satan is coming to town. And Satan come to get some of your money. But better than Satan showing up, I understand that Jesus is coming to town. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to shout. Hallelujah. Jesus said to the woman, 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 where are thy accusers? You know why I'm taking my time? Because I'm having a divine moment. you, you're going to have a divine moment. When God heals you of all your diseases, you're going to have a divine moment. When God fix things, when God fix things, when God work things out, when God delivers, you're going to have a divine moment. The woman stood with all them rocks. She said, Lord, no man condemn me. Are y'all with this? She was caught in the act of adultery. She was guilty of sin. She should have been stoned. Jesus understood that she should have been stoned. In fact, he could have picked up a stone and been the first one to stone her. But he said, no man condemn you. She said, no man. He didn't let off the hook yes. by just des designed to see her having a divine moment. Yes, yes. But he spoke words of wisdom. Yes, yes. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go. I'm, I'm, having, I'm having a divine moment. I'm, I'm having a divine moment. I'm having a divine moment. Go. Let me somebody look up at heaven and say, go. 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 And sin. No more. The off the hook, I just want to let you know I could have condemned you, but I ain't here about condemning, I'm here about saving. Some of us are so busy throwing stones, we throwing bricks, we're knifing folks in the back, and some backstabbers, and some backsliders. Today, they don't just stab you in the back, they harpoon you. Come on, somebody, they want to take you out of here. Now, now, because my mind is tricky, and I think the way I think, can you imagine after Jesus forgave that woman of all her sins, and when you're having a divine moment, you walk right past them same crowd that condemn you. Yeah. Like some of y'all looking at me and 
They suck their teeth. Come on, somebody. They roll their eyes and try to put an evil eye on you. Come on, somebody. Do you know, do you know when you roll your eyes and you throw your eyes, that, that's, the, that's what they call the evil eye? Oh, never mind. Y'all ain't going to. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. Mariah came all the way from Kentucky. My brother came all the way from Italy. Because for them right now, it's a different. You came all the way from where you came from, whether it's across the street or across town. Why? Because right now, it's a what? When that no good man or that no good woman try to ease up on you, say, no, you don't. You can't touch me no more. Amen. He going to say, why? Yeah. You going to say, because I'm having a divine moment. Yeah. And when them sisters roll up on the brother, come on, somebody. I'm going to have to educate some of y'all brothers because some of y'all ain't with it. <laughs> Just because you think you're in charge and you're calling the shots, you need to be re-educated. Yeah. Yeah. Why men were uh, looking at snip snails and puppy dog tail. <laughs> Women were learning about sugar and spice <laughs> and how to get everything nice. I know that ain't in the scripture. But if you're not going to find somebody that's saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, it's better that you remain single. God, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize it with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.